This is the Tamiya Avanti 2001. This is my quote-unquote white special project. Um, the rolling chassis is basically done. I completed the front. Um, previously, I had talked about uh, using the wanting to use the egress front shock towers and having to get the uh, lower uh, mount brackets uh, for the egress. But as luck would have it, I actually did end up finding the uh, Avanti 2001 uh, front shock tower that I had ordered from Pargu uh, some time ago. Uh, I had actually given this tower to a friend of mine who was uh, uh, restoring his Avanti, and I figured he might want to use this for better suspension geometry, but he never used it, and uh, he forgot that he had it, so uh, I just took it back. Um, so that way I don't need those lower brackets, but I did end up ordering them uh, from Fiberlite, Okay, I ordered a, a two pair, and uh, they're not that expensive because they're a small part, pretty cheap. So uh, even though I don't need these presently, um, these are good to have uh, in storage in case I do decide to switch the geometry on this. Okay, well, what's pretty cool about this, as you might be able to see, is that uh, there are two mounting options for the uh, front shock. Okay, so this bracket would go, say, on the right side of the chassis, okay? And then uh, this screw here would screw into the front arm, and so you'd mount the shock either here or here, okay? The original uh, brackets, I think they're what, like BD8 and BD9 or some kind of name like that, they only have one hole. So this is neat. It has some adjustability, and uh, they're pretty thick carbon fiber too. I think it's about three millimeters, so these should be quite durable, okay? So uh, definitely worth getting if you want to restore an egress or, you know, make it turn a 2001 into an egress, uh, at least at the front. So I do have these basically in reserve now uh, in case I want to use them. Uh, what else did I do with the front here? Um, I do have the titanium turnbuckles all installed. Uh, everything's all nice and good. I didn't do anything really too crazy. Um, I just completed you know, putting in all the hex screws, the steering rack, uh, on the 2001, it came with metal bush, bronze bushings. Okay. Uh, these are the, uh, 850 bushings. So in Tamiya language, that's a five by eight millimeter, uh, uh, size bushing. I did order a set of five by eight millimeter bearings. Um, but when I tried to install them, it was too tight. I actually ended up breaking the bearings. So, Presently, I I, uh, I just decided to go back to the bushings. Um, the only problem with the bushings is that you have, unless you make, uh, unless you screw this down, and especially these two posts here to be relatively tight, this whole thing is going to have a lot of play in it. Okay, so you got to be very uh, fiddly. There's a sort of a fine tuning space between how tight you make these screws. Uh, to make the whole steering assembly have uh, a small amount of play without locking the entire thing up, okay? So that's originally why I wanted to get bearings, because there are two bearings that go in here, 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 and here. So we'd need eight bearings total. Um, just It just so happened that the bearings I ordered didn't quite fit right, even though they're 5 by 8 millimeter bearings. So maybe I'll try again with, it, with a different brand uh, of bearing or something. But for now, I'm just leaving these as is. As far as the steering geometry goes, I, I did want to make a, a, a small change because on the original setup for the 2001, uh, there was quite a lot of bump steer, which is another way of saying toe gain. So what that means is as the suspension compresses, the wheel will start to turn in or out. Okay, And what you would ideally want is for uh, this position to be neutral as the suspension compresses. Um, and so that's just, that just comes down to geometry. So basically, uh, long story short, all you have to do to fix that is to put a longer, uh, I can't remember if you needed a longer ball stud under here, but ultimately you just have to take this ball stud and push it further down, which means adding a few spacers. So those standard Tamiya washers that you use, I forget how thick they are. There may be, um, I think they're one millimeter thick each. I put five of them in here. Okay, so it should be about five millimeters total of uh, uh, space here that I'm pushing this ball stud down by. So you add five millimeters of, of uh, 
to this here, push this down, and then uh, that pretty much solves the problem, okay? So that way the angle between this ball stud and this ball stud is shallower uh, throughout the interiority of your suspension travel, okay? So that fixes that problem. Um, what else did I have to do? The ball stud here, because there's a nut that goes in on the other side to tighten it in, um, I had to lift this ball stud up with two washers to keep everything from scraping against the, the upper deck. And uh, let's see. So the front shocks are, well, these are both the Tamiya high capacity uh, dampers, the original vintage ones, not the new ones. Uh, I have these silver springs that, that came with them. The, the person I bought them from shipped them with these. And they're pretty nice. Uh, I think I'm using low C35 weight oil in here. And uh, in the rear, the silver springs that came with them were a little too stiff. So I went to low C pink uh, big bore springs, which actually fit okay. Um, the front and rear diameters of the shock bodies, though, are different. The rears do have a wider diameter than the front. Uh, so you can't, you can use maybe like a standard spring for the front, but on the rear, a standard spring won't fit. It's too tight. You have to use a big bore spring. Okay. So for now, this is, uh, the setup I have. I haven't had any time or frankly resources to put electronics in here and get the body and everything and paint the body up. But in time I will, uh, get a, a repro body from team blue groove. I do have the decals. The decals came in from Panda Graphics. They look okay. I mean, credit to them. They did a nice job scanning and reproducing them. But uh, some of the, the shades, uh, no matter how you do it, it's very, very hard to reproduce. Uh, like for the egress, for example, you have certain parts of the decal that's orange, and it's extremely difficult to reproduce that orange on reproduction decals. Um, so the Avanti 2001 decals they did, they look good. They're plenty fine for a runner. So... Um, in time, I'll have that. These are the uh, white wheels that I can't remember when I got them, but I've had them for a while. So I just want to go with sort of a white sort of exterior theme here just to see how it looks um, with all the silver and black stuff on the inside. But as a roller, uh, this is complete. Um, so in time, one of these days, I'll have this all finished up and, and running and... Um, if I decide that I want to get this dirty, I'll make a running video of it, okay? So thanks for watching.